Hey, you there. I'm about to teach you every single thing that you've ever wished you needed to know about Parallel the Trading Card Game. How to build decks, how to win games, how to lose games unintentionally, everything that's going on on the screen in front of you. I'm going to go through it step by step, your one stop guide right now. Parallel is a collectible card game. You may have heard of others in this genre, such as Hearthstone, Magic the Gathering, or even Marvel Snap. It takes the ease of play from Hearthstone and the long tail complexity of Magic the Gathering, and it smooshes them all together into a game that you've never before seen the likes of in your entire life. But what sets it apart is that it's a sci-fi themed, competitive oriented game that has seamlessly integrated digital collectibles. It also has five different parallels or factions that you can play as or against. These parallels are Ogencore, Marcolian, Earthen, Shroud, and Cathari. Each has three paragons that play in unique and interesting ways. You might be familiar with Planeswalkers in Magic or Heroes in Hearthstone. These are both pretty similar to what the paragons do. Don't tell them I said that. Think of these guys as either the heroes or the villains of your deck. Big boys that sit on the side and have incredibly huge or game altering active abilities. And sometimes they even have passive abilities that'll give you a small but persistent buff throughout the game. You can choose to build your deck around them or you can just use them on the side to spam hello whenever your opponent makes a mistake. A lovely, a lo a lovely, a lovely, a lovely day, no? Each of the five parallels has its own set of cards built around their own unique play style. If you're using an earthen card, you need to play it within an earthen deck, vice versa with Marcolian, Shroud, all the other five. There is, however, a universal set of cards that can be utilized in any deck of any parallel. If you're wondering which parallel to play, first of all, just pick whichever one looks coolest to you. And if that's not enough, if you like being more aggressive, Cathari or Marcolians are both great at that. If you like big dudes where you can upgrade them and keep them around, Earthen and Augencore are great. And if you like taking the game into deeper waters, longer turns, controlling the pace of the action, then Shroud is great for you. For right now, you're just gonna probably be playing constructed decks. So no need to worry about it too much. Just pick whoever looks great. Next up, we've got the cards, the meat and potatoes, heart and soul of the card game. And you're gonna need to know these inside and out if you wanna have any chance when you face me on the leaderboards. It doesn't matter how much you know those fuck cards, man. There are four types of cards in parallel. Units, effects, relics, and upgrades. Before we get into it, if I could ask you to just hit the like button, if you're enjoying the content so far, subscribe. Anything helps us continue to pump out this great educational content for you guys. And we might even have some special surprises coming up. So you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for that. Thank you, appreciate it. Back to it. Units are cards that are played on the battlefield. They have health and attack, they smash into each other, have certain effects, and they are the meat and potatoes of how you play the game. Effects are essentially spells. You play them for a one-time immediate use. It has some sort of effect on the battlefield, and then it goes into your waste as it's been used. Relics are persistent spells. You play them on the board, they stay on the board until they're otherwise removed or used up, and they cause some sort of battlefield effect that either helps you or hinders your opponent. Upgrades are cards that you play on your units that are on the battlefield. It can augment them, giving them extra stats like attack or health, or it could give them a special effect such as card draw or something else. If you take a look at the card, they have a bunch of numbers on them. In the top right, you have your energy cost. That's how much energy it takes to play that certain card. In the bottom left, there's an attack. There's just how much damage they'll deal when smashed into an opposing unit. And on the bottom right is their health. Their health is obviously how many hit points it has until that card is dead. When you attack with a unit and it hits an opponent's unit, the damage dealt is simultaneous. That means the attack damage that you and your unit have will be dealt to the health that your opponent's unit has, and vice versa. Most cards in the game, you can have three of them in your deck. This goes for common, uncommon, rare, but there are certain cards called legendary cards, which are more rare, have more powerful effects, and there can only be one of these placed in each one of your decks. 
The rarity of the card often reflects how powerful that card is. While commons and uncommons will be more staple cards with less ambitious or spectacular effects, rares and legendaries have sometimes game-breaking effects which you can build an entire deck around. When reading through cards and what they do, you'll come across what are called keywords. These are highlighted words on the card. You can hover over them to learn more, but don't overwhelm yourself as there are all sorts of different keywords and all you need to do is know how to play your deck. The rest will come with time and experience. You're probably asking yourself right now, Orphan, how the f do I even get these little cards, dude? I can't keep playing with these peasant constructed decks. Well, calm your little britches down, buster. It's easy. Even though Parallel has digital collectibles, it's essentially a free-to-play game at heart. All you need to do is keep playing, you're going to gain Renown, also known as XP, and then you can use that to upgrade your Battle Pass, get packs of Apparitions, all that stuff. You also have the avenue of going to the Parallel.life website, buying Glints, and using that as in-game currency to buy more cards for your collection. Simple. Alright, so we've got cards covered. Let's get into playing the game. Parallel is played with a deck of 40 cards. And luckily, we don't need to build a deck from scratch right now. If you head over to the Rookie Queue, there's pre-built constructed decks, one for each parallel, that you can play with against other rookies who are playing the same decks. This will get you acquainted with how each parallel plays and also start to build up your collection so later down the line you can start to think about mixing and matching your own deck. Real quick, if you ever need to know what a card does, either yours or your opponent's, you can right click it, read all the card text, you can hover over keywords and read what they do. This is going to be incredibly important because at the beginning, when you're starting out, you're not going to know what the f anything does. And that's okay. The Mulligan screen gives you five cards and also an option to send them back into your deck and draw new cards or to keep the hand you're given. You're going to want to use this time to think about your first two to three turns of your game. What do I want to play? Do I have the energy to play it? And what is my deck's strategy? Ideally, you'll have a, a card to play on turn one, turn two, and turn three, and also have cards to bank for energy. All right, after your Mulligan, you'll be faced with the game board. In the bottom right, there's the bank. With 10 available slots, each turn you can put one of your cards from your hand into the bank, and this gains you an energy. You can then use that energy to pay the cost of the cards and then play them on the battlefield. Your health is right by your profile picture in the bottom middle of the screen, and naturally your goal is to decrease your opponent's health to zero while keeping yours ideally above zero so you don't die. Right below your health is your hand of cards. These are the cards that you have available to play. Right above your bank, you have your deck with a number indicating how many cards are left in that deck. And to the right of it, you have both your waste and if you're playing Shroud, you have your singularity. But all you need to know is that once a card dies or is played and used up, it will go to your waste and it'll be out of the game. Depending on who you picked when you built your deck, on the far left, you'll see your Paragon. At the beginning of your turn, you'll draw one card from the top of your deck. Unlike Hearthstone, where you get one mana on average every turn, and Magic, where you have to draw land cards, play them, and tap them in order to gain energy, in parallel, we have the banking system. Every turn, you can choose if you want to bank one card from your hand or not. If you choose to, this card will then go into your bank and will count as one energy. At the end of your turn, after all is said and done and you click the end turn button, you'll gain another card draw off the top of your deck, essentially cycling the card that you chose to bank for a new card that potentially you can play next turn. As a beginner, you don't need to think too hard about it. Just take what cards you don't want to play, pop them in the bank, build up that energy, and keep playing cards. If you're playing a unit onto the battlefield, it will come in fatigued. That means that you won't be able to attack with it the very first turn. You have to wait until your next turn before it's usable. Don't forget in the heat of battle, when you have enough energy, to look over to your left and play your Paragon. They're big boys for a reason. They can usually turn the tide of battle with their powerful effects. The game will continue on like this. You playing turns, them playing turns, you playing units, them playing effects, on and on until someone ends up victorious. At the end of the day, card games are all about trial and error, they're about learning how to play your deck, learning what to expect from your opponent, and you're gonna lose games. You're also gonna win games and it's gonna feel great. 
There are, however, a few key things that I've picked out when I was learning card games that hopefully can help you think a little bit more clearly about what your goal should be and how to win games. The first idea I want to throw to you is the idea of energy efficiency. You want to be using every ounce of energy that you can on any given turn. This is because the cards cost more because they're more powerful. If every turn you're aiming to use maximum amount of energy, you're going to be using the maximum amount of power that your cards can hold. This isn't always the case, but it's a good rule of thumb to get you playing a little bit more effectively and not leaving power on the table. The next idea is a little bit more advanced, but it's not too difficult to grasp. You want to be thinking about what the goal of your deck is. You could call this tempo, or it could be visualized in an energy curve in the top right of a deck builder. Basically, this is when is my deck most powerful? When do I want to end the game by? You'll have certain cards in your deck that are more powerful than others. You want to focus and play your entire game around when your power spike is, and you'll realize pretty quickly that if you start to fall outside of that, or if you're dying earlier than that, you may need to make adjustments to your deck. Knowing the key cards in your opponent's deck is another game changer. If you can go through those rookie queue games, play all five, learn generally how each different parallel wants to play, you'll be light years ahead when it comes to playing against people who are running similar decks. Last thing I want to say is go out there and get creative. Brew up your own decks, find a card that looks interesting that you don't see people playing, and go out and play with it. Don't copy someone else's deck just because it's quote unquote good. Do you want to be a monkey out there playing the same deck that everyone else is? That's the stupidest thing that I've ever heard in my entire life. It feels good to win, but it feels way better to win with a deck that you built by yourself. If you want to learn more and find out straight from the horse's mouth, head on over to parallel.life or you can follow them on X, aka Twitter, at ParallelTCG. If you're sitting there in your disgusting Cheeto-stained gamer chair, and you're still wondering, which parallel should I play? It's a natural question, and we've got just the video for that. Check this one out. We go over it in depth with their key cards, how they play, all sorts of good stuff. You're gonna like it. There you go. I took you from a tiny, nothing little newt creature to a giant Godzilla-like parallel master god. You're welcome. If you liked this video, please hit the like button. And if you wanna see more beginner's guides, please subscribe, we're gonna keep them coming. Also, if you want to see something that we didn't cover in this video, please leave it in the comments below. We'd love to hear the feedback so we can make better content for you guys. And that's pretty much it, man. Go out there and play some parallel. And also, you better hope to God that I don't run into you on the rank servers.